Since this course often refers to academic mobility, in this lesson we will see what is meant by it, who are the main actors and which are the challenges brought to individuals and institutions involved in mobility flows by the diversification of mobility destinations. Academic mobility refers to members of the academic populations, namely students and staff, who move within countries in the world to spend a certain period abroad to carry out various academic activities, from study to research, teaching and doing internship. In the Western world, academic mobility has a long history that dates back to the origins of universities themselves, when groups of scholars used to move since the 11th century within the European continent, recalled by the fame of prestigious masters. Also today, the individual pursuit of excellence of learning and teaching is one of the driving forces of mobility, but in the last decades, academic mobility increasingly assumed also a core role for the internationalization strategies of higher education institutions, for the creation of higher education and research common areas, such as the European Higher Education Area, for the benefit of the knowledge economy and the resilience of its human resources. If as students, professors and researchers you can still travel as free movers, Currently, you have an array of institutional schemes available to mobilize. Just think, for example, to the well-known Erasmus program. These schemes provide for a strong institutional approach to mobility, envisaging two positive actors facilitating your experience abroad, your home institution and your host institution. In this framework, mobility is never a single individual experience, but it is offered within a wider scheme of institutional cooperation. It is not only moving individuals for their own career development, it's also about creating connections and fostering joint efforts for mutual benefit and advancement, and to face common challenges. In this setting, both actors strive to offer a package of services enabling you to enjoy all the aspects and challenges a mobility abroad brings about, such as cultural diversity, language barriers and integration in a new environment. In the same way, the role you may have within your mobility is highly multifaceted. We can say, in fact, that traveling within such a framework, students and staff are never only one single thing. They are, of course, individuals, but also become sort of ambassadors, having the responsibility to represent a broader identity connected to their home institution, their home country, and their home culture in the contexts and societies within which they will operate. When it comes to contexts and societies, academic mobility involves today the entire globe and various interlocutors. If it is true that destinations in Europe and more generally in the Global North are still top-ranked, the volume of flows looking for non-standard locations in the Global South is also increasing. From one side, the widening of the geographical scope and dimension of research and learning that are connected progressively to local, regional, national and international challenges has called for a diversification of experiences. As an example, studying or investigating on tropical disease brought by migration flows may highly worthwhile to have an in-the-field experience directly in a tropical country. From another point of view, universities and its academic populations are always more called to have an active role within the international cooperation activities with various entities, from peer universities to private companies, local authorities, international organizations and NGOs, requiring always more for human resources who are able to act out of their comfort zones. As a consequence, also the type of academic mobility students and staff embark today is more diversified than in the past. On the student side, even though learning mobility probably still remains the bulk of mobility flows, there is an increasing offer for a wider range of opportunities, such as research in the field, internship or placement experiences, short intensive courses and service learning experiences that are more likely to bring students working with different interlocutors on sensitive topics for the hosting environment. 
This requires to consider always more ethical issues from one side and to address an accurate design of research methodologies to be applied, the scope of the activities to carry out and the operational constraints and limits to not overcome to preserve the security and safety of mobility. On the staff side, research and teaching are the main reasons to move yet. Nonetheless, activities such as job shadowing, knowledge sharing, capacity building, collaborations in the developing countries with actors like NGOs are also increasing. To conclude, the progressive diversification of mobility destinations and type of activities has raised an attention on issues connected either to the role mobile students and staff cover in the host context and the role the institutions involved, particularly the home institution, cover to preserve students and staff security and safety. To face the challenges brought about mobility, institutions are concentrating their efforts to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of services for mobile students and staff, particularly pre-departure and risk management preparation, to set up reliable partnerships with various interlocutors, and last but not the least, to promote the awareness of their mobile students and staff about their security during an academic travel.